So yesterday we took and factored x squared plus bx plus c form. Today we're looking at ax squared plus bx plus c form. And this a in front is going to do a lot of damage. If you look at the factored form of the polynomial in relationship to the multiplied foiled out form, you'll notice the relationship that we had earlier with our 1x squared plus bx plus c doesn't exist. So in other words, what multiplies to negative 6 may in this case equal negative 1, but here what multiplies to 2 does not equal 9. So it's not always going to be the same case. Whenever there's an ax squared in front, we're going to have to come up with a different rule of thumb to do this. Now, if you had algebra prior to this in eighth grade, your teacher might have shown you one way, and if you like that, knock yourself out. Um, I'm going to show you what's called a five-step method for factoring any term with a coefficient in front of the x squared term other than a. So in my first of five steps, I'm going to take and multiply the a term by the c term. In doing that, I get x squared minus 15x minus 16. Then I'm going to take and factor the remaining x squared plus bx plus c term. And in this case, we're always going to have a 1 in front of that x term. So again, it's like finding out what multiplies to c and adds or subtracts to b. So in this case, I have x minus 16 and I have x plus 1. Then in my third step, I'm going to take and bring back that original a term and divide it into each constant in these binomial products. So I, my initial multiple term was a 4. I'm going to take and divide each of those constant terms by a 4. So I have x minus 16 over 4 and x plus 1 over 4. I'm going to reduce any fractions in my next step. So this goes to x minus 4. And this fraction doesn't reduce, so I'm going to leave it as is. Then x plus a quarter. And then any remaining denominators I'm going to bring in front of the existing variable. So I have x minus 4 times 4x plus 1. And you'll notice now when I multiply, I have 4x squared plus x minus 16x minus 4, which is 4x squared minus 15x minus 4. And that's what we were trying to get back. So this is the five-step method for factoring. It may take a little time to get used to, but it works real well if you just follow it step by step. Let's go through and practice a little bit more. So here we have a situation where I've got coefficient in front of my x squared term. I'm going to go with the five steps. So take x squared plus 29x minus 96. So now I have to find two terms that multiply to negative 96 and add to 20. So in this case, I have x plus 32 and x minus 3. So for my next step, I'll take and bring that initial multiple back in. So I divide each term by 8. Reduce any fractions. I have x plus 4 and x minus 3 over 8. Any denominator that remains comes to the front of the binomial. So that's x plus 4 multiplied by 8x minus 3. Foil that out, and you'll end up with what we wanted back. So in this next example, we do very much the same. Multiply the 6 times the 5, get x squared minus 11x plus 30. Find two terms that multiply to positive 30 but add to negative 11 means both terms are going to be, need to be negative. And I'll have 6 and 5. Again, we divide 
each constant by the initial multiple, reduce any fractions left over, and any remaining denominator goes to the front of the binomial. So I have x minus 1 times the quantity of 6x minus 5. Again, if you FOIL that out, you receive the initial polynomial back. So in this example, you'll notice we have an equation. And in an equation with an x squared term, what we're going to have to do is make sure that a side set equal to 0. That's already been done for us. So let's go through and just apply the five-step principle here. We've got x squared plus 24x plus 140 is equal to 0. What multiplies to 140 adds to 24. That's going to give me 10 and 14. Divide by our initial multiple. And you'll notice in this case, these reduce, but neither goes to a whole number. So I have x plus 5 over 2 and x plus 7 over 2 is equal to 0. Bring any denominator to the front of the binomial. And then use our zero product principle. So we have 2x plus 5 equals 0. And 2x plus 7 is equal to 0. Therefore, subtract 5, divide by 2. So x equals negative 5 over 2. Subtract 7, divide by 2. x equals negative 7 over 2. And those are my two solutions for the problem. Not much different than what we did before. We're just following that five-step method. In this case, we've got another equation. But our side has not been set equal to 0. We've got a squared term, so we need to do that. I'm going to add 11x to both sides, or 11k in this case. I can only add like terms, so I have 2k squared plus 11k minus 40 is equal to 0. I'm going to use that five-step method again. Get k squared plus 11k minus 80 is equal to 0. I want to find two numbers that multiply to 80 and add or subtract to 11. It's going to be k minus 5 and k plus 16. Divide both by the initial multiple. I get no reduction here, so this goes to 2k minus 5. Reduces to 8 here. Still equal to 0. Use my zero product principle. 2k minus 5 equals 0. And k plus 8 equals 0. Therefore, add 5, divide by 2. k is equal to... Five over two, subtract eight in this case, k is equal to negative eight. Couple more. So now we're trying to purchase a table, and it comes in a variety of dimensions. The length is one meter greater than twice the width, so let's call this width x and call this one more than twice x. And we're going to budget for a tabletop that has an area of 3. So this area is equal to 3. We want to find the length and the width of the table they can purchase. So in order to do this, we need to have an area equation for a rectangle. That's x multiplied by 2x plus 1 is going to equal 3. So in this case, I distribute in, get 2x squared plus x equals 3. I have a squared term, which means I need to set aside equal to 0. 
So subtract 3 from both sides. Use my 5 step, x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Multiplies to 6, adds to 1. So I've got x, x, 3, 2. The 3 is positive, the 2 is negative. I'm going to divide by my initial multiple once again. Get x minus 1. No reduction, so the denominator moves to the front of the binomial. And then I need to find the values for x. x could equal 1. And then in this case, I've got 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. So therefore, I subtract 3 and divide by 2. So in this case, x is going to be equal to negative 3 halves. Now, only one of these will make any sense. In this case, the x equals negative 3 halves. I can't have a side that is negative. So in this case, x equals 1 is my only possible solution. So the second solution is a no-go. And if x equals 1, then that means I have sides of 1 and 3 for this rectangle. And that's all we've got for today. Take and work these problems out, write your lesson summary, and we'll get back to you tomorrow.